Hi, this is Linda with No Frills ASMR. I thought I'd take a little break from writing my next great work of fiction to talk to you about movie quotes. Quotes from movies that we've all heard a hundred times, maybe, and maybe you don't know what movie it's from, and you're like, why do people keep saying that? <laughs> so I just picked a few to go over today, and spoilers will abound. I am going to tell you why they say it, if I can, if I can remember. <clears throat> and, um, you know, any information about it. So it might spoil the show, the movie. Um, I'm only doing film quotes today, but there are tons more I could do. And there's tons of, you know, TV and um, uh, just TV. I guess. <laughs> what else? Anyway, there are all kinds of different ones. But I just picked a few film ones that I say a lot or I hear a lot. So I thought we could go over that real quick. So I'll put this aside for just a moment. And I might have to clear my throat every now and then, because still with this cold. <laughs> oh no, whoops. I tell you, butterfingers. <clears throat> okay, so the first one is the movie, the classic. Anybody have a guess based on what I just showed you? <laughs> Shining. Now, this movie actually has more than a couple of quotes that I could do because, actually, I, I might do two because it's <laughs> it's such a great movie. Um, have you seen the movie The Shining? Well, if you haven't, I'm gonna spoil it. <laughs> so here we go. <clears throat> if you don't want it spoiled, you might skip. <laughs> So the basic gist of The Shining, that has one in, right? I think I did that right, is um, there's a young family, and he is a writer, and he's working on his next great novel. And in order to make some money while he's working on the novel, he goes to a hotel called the Overlook Hotel, which is a seasonal hotel. <clears throat> and so... The hotel needs a winter caretaker. So he takes his young wife and young son. Um, his son's probably, I don't know, seven, maybe. And they go to the Overlook Hotel, which is a huge old hotel. And during that um, winter, they're snowed in. They're kind of stuck in there. And there is a, another caretaker there with them. But he starts hearing voices in his head which I think are called Shining only because I've read the Stephen King book um, <clears throat> I guess I read the follow up book I forget what it was called but anyway so he basically goes crazy and his wife can feel that happening and she goes to look at the novel he's writing and on his typewriter she sees all these pages, and there's a whole stack of them that just look like a novel written out. They have paragraphs, they have everything. But she pulls it out. And comes to find all it says over and over and over for a thousand pages is all work and no play make Jack a doll boy over. Very scary. <laughs> so that's why I had the typewriter. Hold well, on, I'm gonna take a sip of my tea. <clears throat> okay, you must see my my sister gave me this cute teacup. Well, coffee mug, I guess, really. <clears throat> so that's one quote from The Shining is all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I'm debating whether to start over. I don't. I'm going to keep going, guys. <laughs> so, 
So then the other quote, though, and I, I could I could come up with some more, but there's one in particular where so now this she has realized he's crazy and she he starts chasing her with an axe and she has a knife and she goes and she hides in a bathroom and um, Jack Nicholson's character, Shelley Duvall is playing the wife and she's in the bathroom. And Jack Nicholson's character is like, let me in, let me in. And he's going, little pig, little pig, let me in. And then he takes the axe and he busts through the door. He makes a hole in the door. And before I tell you what he says, we'll go back in time a minute to that period of The Tonight Show. There was the show The Tonight Show, which was a very popular talk show. And Johnny Carson was the host of The Tonight Show. And this is before, you know, Jimmy Fallon and Jay Leno. And, um, I'm sorry, my throat. Um, and so every night, Doc, oh, what was his name? Sever, no, Doc Severson's, wait a minute, Ed McMahon. Ed McMahon would announce Johnny Carson coming out by saying, here's Johnny. And then Johnny Carson would come out and go, do, 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 do. And Johnny would come out. So <clears throat> when the character, Jack Nicholson's character, whose name was John, when he breaks through the door, he breaks a hole through the panel of the bathroom door and he sticks his head through and he goes, here's Johnny. <laughs> and so it's both kind of funny, but very different. But that's either one of those two things could be why you hear people say, here's Johnny. (laughs) Okay, so that's The Shining. Great movie. Recommend. Um, I am looking for my scissors. I know that, um, wasn't it Stephen King wasn't super happy with it or something, but I thought it was really good, so whatever. And there have been a lot of Stephen Kings that have been made into not great movies and I love his books but okay and so that is why I had the typewriter (laughs) all right so we have The Shining and then the next one is from the movie I love this Moonstruck have you guys seen that movie And it is a moment in the movie where Cher is playing uh, Loretta and Nicolas Cage plays her uh, fiance's brother, Ronnie. So Cher is engaged to a guy, but she kind of (laughs) accidentally sleeps with his brother Ronnie and they are actually meant to be together and so she wakes up in the morning next to Ronnie and she regrets being there and Ronnie Nicolas Cage's character is like what do you do why would you regret it we're meant to be together and there is a moment in this scene where Cher goes into a closet to change into her clothes and Nicolas Cage opens the closet door to talk to her. <laughs> and he kind of, I think he breaks character a little bit, but he gets a smile on his face. And it's adorable. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> anyway, but then he says to Loretta, Cher's character, he says, I love you. And she smacks him across the face and smacks him across the face again. And she says, snap out of it. And that is the quote that you often hear people say is snap out of it (laughs) and that's a great one and Cher is so good in fact I think she won the Academy Award um for that or was it Silkwood she was in Silkwood no I think she won it for a Moonstruck anyway that's a fun one and a good movie if you haven't seen it snap out of it did you know that um Nicholas Cage, who I love. He's Francis Ford Coppola's nephew. I think he's his nephew, which just shows everybody in Hollywood is connected, I swear. <laughs> everybody. All right, this next one is my 
probably my favorite movie of all time. But I don't know. I have a few. <laughs> Jaws. <laughs> and there are a bunch of quotes I could do from this one. Because <clears throat> I love it so much. But. <clears throat> we'll do the probably most famous one. Which is um, this moment in Jaws. Where uh, Chief Brody who he is a if you haven't seen Jaws they're on the uh, east coast I think they're I should know this I've seen the movie a hundred times but I feel like they're in like Maine or Massachusetts somewhere somewhere north where sharks weren't as common I guess and they have a couple of incidences where sharks or a shark is eating people <clears throat> and there's some funny quotes about that <laughs> But we'll do that in a different video because I'm not talking about that right now. But, um, and uh, Chief Brody wants to close the beaches down for July 4th. And the mayor is like, absolutely not. That's our big money tourist weekend. We're not closing the beaches. So Chief Brody, who's afraid of water, goes out with Quint, who is a seasoned uh, fisherman. And... He and, and also um, <clears throat> Hooper, who's like a scientist, a biologist. And anyway, so they're in this kind of small, not small, but a fishing boat, a small fishing boat <clears throat> that is Quint's. And Quint has Chief Brody chumming the water to attract the shark because they want to kill the shark before July 4th weekend. I got to take another sip of my tea. I can't believe my voice. This is insane. <clears throat> It's gone on too long. Okay, so <laughs> so he's chumming the water, and all of a sudden, the shark <laughs> comes up to eat the chum, and it's a big, giant, great white shark. And Brody stands up and starts kind of shuffling backwards into the um. I want to call an office, but the cabin where Quint is and he looks at Quint and he says we're gonna need a bigger boat <laughs> so if you've ever heard anyone say we're gonna need a bigger boat <clears throat> that is from Jaws a great 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 movie a really well written movie um that's also a really fun blockbuster that also has some actually <clears throat> in amazing directing there's a shot where um brody is sitting on the beach and the camera i forget there's a name for it but it like goes out and comes in at the same time i don't know you have to see it anyway <laughs> it's good okay the next one is from <clears throat> i might need a bigger piece of paper hold on <clears throat> okay it's from the movie Another movie that I could probably quote a bunch of different uh, lines because there are a lot. There are a lot of good ones in it. Future. All right, back to the future. Um, I'm trying to think of which because I have a couple. I'll tell you what. We'll do two because we'll do one from back to the... Okay. So in Back to the Future, there is a moment where, let me remember how it goes, but Marty has gone, okay, Marty is a, <laughs> how, how much do I need to go? Marty is a character in Back to the Future played by Michael J. Fox, so he was like a teenage high schooler, and he ends up going back in time, but he gets stuck back in time. Because he needs his DeLorean to go a certain speed in order to go back to the future. Hence the name. So he finds the doctor who built the time machine in the past. And he tells him, I know you in the future. And you got me here. And you have to get me back. And so <laughs> the, doc the, the 
guy who built the time machine. His name's Doc Brown. Doc Brown. And <clears throat> is that right? Doc Brown. Yeah, I think that's right. Anyway, and um, so he brings a he has the VHS player that he manages to plug into the TV to show him a video, to show Doc Brown a video of himself in the future telling Marty how the time machine works. So Doc Brown's watching it and he hears his future self say it requires 1.21 gigawatts of power. And the young Doc Brown, the past Doc Brown, realizes this is an amount you can't create like it's crazy and so he starts running around his you know workshop going 1.21 gigawatts 1.21 gigawatts so that is where that comes from if you've ever heard somebody go 1.21 gigawatts so anyway that's that quote <clears throat> but then there's one from back to the future 2 that I just heard on a commercial yesterday, which actually sort of sent me on this journey because I was like, oh yeah, quotes from movies. But it is the quote that you've been probably hearing a lot where uh, it's Doc Brown and Marty and Marty's girlfriends with him. And they're all in the DeLorean and they start to take off because they have to go one point twenty one two. No, they have to go like a certain miles per hour within 30 seconds I forget and so they need a certain amount of roadway <clears throat> and Marty says Doc you don't have enough road you know to make the speed and Doc has been to the future future and Doc says roads where we're going we don't need roads and that's the quote <clears throat> so that is from back to the future two All right, this next one you hear a lot. It's used a lot. <laughs> and it is from Taxi Driver. Um, <clears throat> so Taxi Driver, it's an old movie. It goes back to the 70s. I didn't see it until the 90s, I think. Um, but it is a Robert De Niro movie, and um, what's her name? Jodie Foster played a um, <clears throat> a very young sex worker in the movie. And in fact, I think when she played the part, she was like 12 or 13 years old. And, you know, back in the 70s, that was okay, I think. Now it's looked on like, hmm, <laughs> should that have been okay? I don't know. But um, apparently there was a scene where it's Martin Scorsese directed it. And he had Robert De Niro uh, in front of a mirror. So he's shooting the cameras looking at the mirror. I think that's how it was. Or maybe. Anyway, my recollection is you, the audience, are looking into the mirror and seeing Robert De Niro. And he... Well, let me back it up a little about the story of Taxi Driver. Hold on, let me take a sip of water real quick. <laughs> or tea, really. Mm. So he was a, the story was, he comes back from the Vietnam War, <clears throat> um, having fought in the Vietnam War, and becomes a taxi driver in New York City. <clears throat> and he was very alone. And um, seen what was going on in the city, he became obsessed with trying to clean the city up. And that's part of the story. And I will say this about the, see, I don't know if you watch this movie now, if it would have the same effect as it did back in the 80s. Although, like I said, I saw it in the 90s. But at that time, we were pretty fresh out of the Vietnam War. And I think a lot of, um, like, my friends' parents or my uncles or, you know, had, had been in the Vietnam War. But it wasn't talked about very much because there was so much 
disagreement political, you know, uh, about that. (laughs) So his, the way that Robert De Niro acts in this movie, I don't know if today you'd understand it the same way because he's, well, actually I take that back. I think you would, (laughs) because it's very much like what's going on now, I think. But, um, so anyway, he was very alone and lonely and started kind of talking to himself. And, uh, I just feel like the movie is a real study on, on loneliness and how you can start to tell yourself stories. Okay. That was a lot. I got deep on taxi driver. (laughs) All to say there is a moment in the film where Robert De Niro is looking in a mirror and he's saying he's practicing with his gun, like what he's going to do and what he's going to say. And he says the line, you talking to me, you talking to me. (laughs) And so if you ever hear someone say, you talking to me, that's Robert De Niro in taxi driver. So there you go. (laughs) I don't know why I got into such a (laughs) discussion on that one, but anyway. Um, Okay. Let's do a fun one. (laughs) This isn't fun. What? It is from the movie. One of my favorite, maybe my favorite. I don't know. It's up there with Jaws. I won't be able to fit it, will I? fellas all right this movie is so good if you have not seen it it's so good I love the movie Goodfellas (laughs) but when I was in high school I got the book I was really into reading autobiographies so I read like well I told you guys I read Lee Iacocca's (laughs) I read Gilda Radner's I read um anyway but one of them was and I don't remember his name but the man who the story Goodfellas is based on uh, had written a book called, I think it was called Wise Guys. And so I'd read that book and loved it. And he went undercover. He was, I think, FBI. And he went undercover into the world of the mafia. And that is the story that they tell in Goodfellas. But Goodfellas is told in a very entertaining way I mean you know all that <laughs> mafia stuff's pretty pretty well but there is a scene where uh the the wise guy that I told you wrote the book who's being played by Ray Liotta um Henry he is currently deep undercover and trying to become a maid um I don't know if at this point in the movie he was already made, which is like the mafia's term for like a trusted guy. Um, But that was kind of his goal was to become trusted. So he, they're at an Italian restaurant sitting at a table and Henry's there. And one of the like mob, I can't remember if he's like a mob boss or what, but it's played by, he's played by Joe Pesci and his name is Tommy. So they're sitting across from each other. There's like a round table. And so Henry's here and Joe Pesci's here. And then there's some other, you know, kind of mob guys around. And Joe Pesci, <clears throat> uh, Henry says something like, oh, you're funny. Just offhand about a conversation they're having. And Joe Pesci starts going, you think I'm funny? Funny like how? Funny like a clown. And he starts really keeps going and saying this to Henry. And you can see Henry, like, Ray Liotta is so good, and Joe Pesci is so good, but you can see him getting nervous, but acting like he's not nervous, like little beads of sweat, <laughs> kind of. And he's just sitting there taking it. This is a little bit of a spoiler, because the scene's so good. So go watch the scene. <laughs> but Joe Pesci just keeps on. And the other guys at the table are like, hey, Tommy, you know, calm down. He's just, he's just talking. He's just talking. And he's like, yells at them. And they immediately shut up. Like, they know this guy's dangerous. And I mean, dangerous. Like, he kills people. And he just keeps going at him, you know. What do you think's funny? You think I'm a clown? And then Henry, so cool, <laughs> just says, ah, you know, you almost had me. 
you're messing with me. And I'm cleaning up the language a little bit. And then Joe Pesci starts laughing. It is, I can't even do it. It's such a great scene. It's like a great moment in movie history. <laughs> and that is Goodfellas. And I could come up with <clears throat> 10 other things from Goodfellas because it's got a lot of good ones. Okay, I got another one. <clears throat> Real quick, you know, I was thinking about why most of the quotes that I can think of are from older movies or older television. And I have a theory on this that because nowadays there's so many things you can stream and there's just so much content that people aren't seeing the same thing. It's not like like it used to be when Goodfellas came out within, I don't know, a year of Goodfellas being out, every person I knew had seen the movie Goodfellas. But now like Oppenheimer, I don't know, maybe I know two other people who went and saw that on opening day like I did and Barbie on the next day. <laughs> but I mean, Barbie, maybe, maybe people will be like, hi, Barbie, hi, Barbie, or, you know, a beach off or whatever. But I don't think people are seeing enough of the same content that you can just quote it and have other people go, ha, I know exactly what that means and what you're talking about. You know, now it's like if I quote something from a movie, most people are going to look at me and go, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and so, by the way, if in a comment I make some odd statement <laughs> that you're like, what is she talking about? It could be a quote from a movie that I am assuming everyone knows. <laughs> I do try to respond to comments, but um, lately I've been um kind of busy doing some stuff, so it's been a little harder for me to keep and it's like once you get behind it's hard to catch up. so I apologize if you know I do read them um sometimes at 4 a.m <laughs> and I go I can't respond because then it'll wake me up I can read it though <laughs> although sometimes I read it and it wakes me up because well not everyone's a, a winner <laughs> okay so this quote is from <clears throat> but almost everyone is super super They hide the ones with bad words. Am I spelling L-E-A? Um, but, and so I don't see them unless I go on my computer. I can't believe things people say. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Why would I make you that angry? I don't know. Anyway, a leak of their own. <laughs> okay. Have you guys seen this? It's a good movie. I think it came out in, oof. this one may be from the 90s. Or did it come out in the 80s? I guess it came out probably late 80s. <clears throat> but what A League of Their Own is about is during World War II, when all the men were gone fighting in the war, there was no baseball. And there was <laughs> a guy, I think it was played by like John Lovitz, who I talked about in the theater master thespian video but anyway um he owns a candy company and i think this is based on a true story and he's like hey i need a baseball team so i can sell my candy um you know i don't know like cracker jacks or bazooka with the cards they had baseball tie-ins i don't remember what the candy was but so he wants to start a all-girl baseball league <clears throat> and so they do that and they have recruited uh, an ex-coach who's kind of, I don't remember if he was a drunk or what, but he was kind of rough around the edges. And then all these young women who were learning baseball. <laughs> and so there is a scene where the coach, who's played by Tom Hanks, is yelling at one of the young players who's, you know, new to all this. And he's screaming at her <laughs> like she's a seasoned professional baseball player and she's just standing there and she starts like a little tear drops out of her eye <laughs> and Tom Hanks's character is walking away and then he looks over and he goes are you crying and she goes no and he goes there's no crying in baseball <laughs> there's no crying in baseball 
So that is where that quote comes from. If you've ever had anyone say to you, there's no crying in baseball. That is from the movie A League of Their Own. Tom Hanks says it. <laughs> it's a good movie. A lot of interesting Madonnas in that movie. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, it's a good movie. All right. Um, oh, a quote that my husband does all the time. Now I've never even watched this movie, but I'm going to tell you about it because I love the quote. <laughs> it is from a movie from the 1950s <clears throat> called The Wild Ones. I think the movie is from like... 1953 so I don't know I never watched it <clears throat> so if you guys have watched it let me know if it's good enough to watch because sometimes my husband he loves these old movies and he'll make me watch an old movie and some of them are like <sighs> like so boring <laughs> don't tell him I said that they're like so slow I don't know so I haven't watched this but he loves to quote it because apparently there's a scene where it's Marlon Brando and Marlon Brando is like wearing a leather jacket and he's part of the wild ones motorcycle gang or whatever and then there's this young woman and she's like says to Marlon Brando's character hey Johnny what are you rebelling against and Johnny and this is my husband's favorite line says what do you got <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. So, yeah, I, haven't, I, I can't give you background on that because I haven't seen it. But it is, uh, wait, is that, that's Marlon Brando. And I haven't done the other one. Okay, we're getting to another Marlon Brando. Hold on. This quote is one that my dad used to say all the time. <laughs> and so it makes me think of him. But it is from the movie Planet of the apes which by the way they made remakes of and I don't know I haven't seen the original since I was a kid but as a kid I loved it <laughs> and my friend John who had all the Star Wars figurines that I told you about in the Star Wars video and we'd play under a pine tree with those before Star Wars came out Planet of the Apes was the thing and so he also had all the Planet of the Apes figurines. <laughs> so pre-Star Wars, we played with Planet of the Apes. <laughs> but anyway, okay. So I'll spoil a little bit of Planet of the Apes, I think. So the gist of this quote is, These astronauts have landed on a planet where um, apes rule the planet and the apes end up killing I, I feel like they kill two of the astronauts and then the third astronaut gets shot in his throat but lives and pretty quickly he starts to realize that any humans who are on the planet don't speak they don't they're mute and the apes have a hierarchy where like gorillas are I forget how the hierarchy works but it's something like gorillas are the workmen and orangutans are the government and chimpanzees are like the scientists and the smart people I think that's how it was <clears throat> but there is a moment so all the apes are under the impression that no humans can talk and they can't because for years they've been um well, I'm not sure why they can't talk. I think in the newer one, they show it like it was the, what do they call it, simian flu or something, and it makes it so humans can't talk. But I don't remember exactly what the deal, but anyway, so they assume they can't talk. And in the original Planet of the Apes, it's Charlton Heston, who plays the astronaut, and he has escaped from, oh, I should say the apes use the humans like like slaves and like entertainment they don't they see them as sub sub ape <laughs> so he escapes 
and he's running through the town and all the apes are throwing tomatoes at him and trying to catch him and he's running away and they're kind of just you know being mean to him and trying to catch him and finally they throw a net down and they catch him and they pull him up and all the apes start to kind of grab at him and thinking he cannot talk and they've never heard a human talk all of a sudden he turns and he looks and he says get your stinking paws off me you dirty filthy ape i hope that quote's right it's something like that but my dad used to always just say get your stinking paws off me so that if you've ever heard somebody say that that's from the original planet of the apes so that's a good one all right the next one is from the movie oh my this is getting kind of long i'm gonna have to um uh all right we'll just do like two more this one's a good one you need to know this it's from the movie which has a few different lines you could quote oh boy how do you spell it i have to i have stopped talking and concentrate <laughs> Jerry Maguire, which I guess that movie came out in the 90s, so if you don't want to spoil I don't think I'll spoil it. There's not much. It's a, it's a love story, really, in the end. Okay, the, the quote from Jerry Maguire, if, <laughs> go watch the YouTube clip of it, even if you don't want to watch the movie, because there was an actor, and I guess, I think he, maybe he's on stuff still, but yeah, Cubic Gooding Jr. He was so good. He was so good. And he was in so many movies for like a period of time, like five years. And I don't know where he went. I kind of feel like maybe he was in that um, TV show. I can't think of the name of it right now, but I'm not sure. Anyway, but there is this moment. So Jerry Maguire is the main character and he is a sports agent. And one of his clients wants Jerry to like work harder for him I think and he is going to cancel his what do you call it a uh, contract with Jerry Maguire and Jerry can't have that because he'll lose you know that's a ton of his money his income so Jerry basically calls him to say what do you want me to do what do I have to do to keep you and <laughs> Cuba Gooding Jr.'s character um I don't know I did write down his name, Rod Tidwell. I don't remember that, actually. But anyway, he, <laughs> you have to watch the scene, it's so good. And by the way, Regina King is in this movie, and she is excellent in this movie. And even in this scene, she is just standing there in the kitchen in the background. And her face, I just love her so much. But anyway, so Cuba Gooding Jr. is on his telephone in his kitchen, and his friend's there, and his wife is there. And he's talking to Jerry Maguire, who's sitting in his office at work in like a glass kind of cubicle office. So everybody else can kind of hear him around. And he says, what do I need to do to keep you as a client? And <laughs> Cuba Gooding Jr.'s character goes, you know what you need to do? And he starts going, show me the money. And then he's like, you say it, Jerry. And Jerry's like, show me the money. And he's like, no, you need to really say it. And so then he gets Jerry screaming, show me the money. And the whole office is looking at him. But I really don't think Tom Cruise's version, by the way, did I tell you Tom Cruise plays Jerry Maguire? I don't remember. But Tom Cruise is screaming it. And that's kind of good. But the best part is when Cuba Gooding Jr. is screaming it because he's hilarious going, show me the money. So, yeah. That is from Jerry Maguire. But there are other quotes from Jerry Maguire. But I'll just stick with that one for now. Uh, okay, we have to we have to end this. Let's see which is the best quote. Let's do. Let's do. I said I was gonna do another another Marlon Brando, but I've changed my mind. Because I really like this movie too. A few good men. A few good men is a movie about. I, f 
forget. I think they're Marines, but I could be wrong. Who, two Marines who have been charged with the murder of another Marine. And Jack Nicholson plays the, oh shoot, Lieutenant, Captain, I don't know. I don't know much about military, sorry. I'll study that one day. But, um, so he plays the, I'm going to call him Lieutenant. <laughs> That's probably wrong. Now I'm going to be stupid. Anyway, um, and then Tom Cruise plays the lawyer and Demi Moore. They're the lawyers for the two men who are accused of murder. But Demi Moore's character has kind of figured out that these men only did the murder because the lieutenant, this is a spoiler, <laughs> told them to. So Tom Cruise's character is trying to get the lieutenant to admit to it in front of the jury at the trial. And basically everybody says, you shouldn't call him up because this guy, you can't break him. <clears throat> so Tom Cruise calls him up, you know, to be a witness anyway, and has him explain through what happened and this and that. And then he's trying to get him to say, that he ordered the um, murder. And Jack Nicholson's character is like, um, he keeps looking at him and he's going, what do you want? What do you want from me? What do you want me to say? And Tom Cruise says, I want the truth. And Jack Nicholson responds, and this is the line that people quote, Jack Nicholson responds, you can't handle the truth. And that is the quote, you can't handle the truth. And then he goes on to basically admit that, yeah, I ordered it. <laughs> so you can't handle the truth. So yeah, that's a good one. I have plenty more, but I think I'll stop here for now because that was quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I just thought it would be fun to look them over. And if you guys like this. I could, I could play this game all day. <laughs> I can think of so many. Anyway, so what do we have? You can't handle the truth. Show me the money. Get your dirty paws off me. <laughs> Something like that. Um, what are you rebelling against? <laughs> what you got? <laughs> what you got? Is that right? I think so. Uh, there's no crying in baseball. Um, you think I'm funny? I guess the, it's like, you think I'm funny? Funny like how? Funny like a clown? <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, taxi driver, um, I'm walking here. Wait, is that the line I used from taxi? Now I forget which one I did. That's one I did, right? Oh, no, I didn't. Wait, that's not taxi driver. Hold on. Back up. I didn't do I'm walking here. Oh, that's for next time. <laughs> I did. You talking to me? You talking to me? Are you? It's a great one. Back to the Future, we did too. What did we do? We did, um, oh, roads. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. And we did 1.21 gigawatts. Jaws, we did, you're going to need a bigger boat. I always say it, we're going to need a bigger boat, but whatever. Moonstruck, snap out of and The Shining, we did too. We did Here's Johnny. And we did the, oh yeah. And we started with this. All work and no play, make Jack a doll boy. All work and no play, make Jack a doll boy. So, that was fun. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope you guys did too. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. I'll just count up these cards, see how many we have. So, I'll talk to you soon.